Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor and welcome to a brand new tutorial today. And I'm going to be focusing on post processing volumes and creating volumes which you can almost transition into different areas and update the post processing effect. And you can create a completely different visual style between rooms, areas, whatever it needs to be. And I noticed this most prominently in I think the remake of Resident Evil 2 that when you start in the middle of the police station, it's bright normal looking and it's all fine as if it's all happy and quite safe then when you walk into the corridors you see the post-processing shift it gets really dark quite a little bit blue and i'm going to be creating a tutorial on creating an atmospheric house with adding lots of variation and effects to make it more creepy and atmospheric and you let me know if you would be interested in seeing that so make sure to come and join me on patreon if you want to support the channel and get access to over 135 different scripts projects and assets you cannot find anywhere else check out all the links in the description for all the new sales on the Unity store and on Humble Bundle because you can save tens of thousands of dollars on different assets. Be sure to throw a like on this video and make sure you're subscribed with the notifications to always be updated when I upload new content. Now if you do need to install post processing to get the effects you can go window package manager and you can go to the top and go to unity registry and you can just type in post and then you can select the post processing stack and just download that by clicking the button in the bottom corner. Now once you have that you need to get on your camera or your character controller you need to add a post processing layer. Volume blending needs to be on trigger I've created my own layer at the top called post processing. If you need to, you can just click add layer and this just stops it rendering across other things as well. So we just keep it to a specific layer. So then you can occlude objects or triggers or things like that in the future. And I just use the temporal anti-aliasing because it's the most refined and probably performant type of anti-aliasing. Now you've got to remember that also on your camera that you probably want to turn MSAA off. So then what we might want to do is to create our volume or the area where we will actually walk into. We'll create a 3D object, choose a cube, and you can see the cube in my scene. And I might want to start with the cube that's this entire corridor. So I will just scale something out with the default controls like this. I'm going to remove the mesh renderer because we don't need that for now. We can just leave our trigger that's like this. We're going to set that to is trigger on our box collider. And we're going to add a new component and we're just going to call this post processing volume. Now you can see that when it isn't global, it highlights our trigger for us in a light blue. Now if I put it global, you would realize that this post processing volume would be the same across the entirety of the scene. If we untick is global and you can use something called blend distance, which if you've got two post processing effects side by side, you can blend between them. So I like to add a one or something like that. And you can see that we have an extra bounding box either side or around our current shape to show where it's going to blend to. You can use the weight to actually change what the strength of the post processing will be. And you can also use the priority that if it's a higher weight, it will take priority over other post processing effects. And then you need to be able to create your new post processing effect. So if I just press new and it will create a post processing profile. So it's just called the cube profile. You can rename this in your, if you want. And in this case, you can add new effects. So I'm being occlusion, auto exposure, bloom, whatever you want. You can just add a load to it. And I have a tutorial which shows you exactly how to understand what all of the effects do. I have already created two specific profiles. So I'm just going to call this one my corridor and then I will just duplicate it and I'm just going to move them side by side and then I'm going to scale it out and I'm just going to encapsulate the other two rooms that I have and then I'm just going to name this to rooms. I might just set the blend distance to about 0.5 so we just get a smaller blend between the two. So we can select those two objects and just set the layer to post processing because you remember our camera had the layer of post processing on it. So now I'll select my corridor. I've created two specific profiles and if you need to create more, you can just keep clicking new or you can right click in your project, say create and choose post post profile. But say in this case, I'll search and I want my dark corridor, which is the set of post processing effects I want. And then the rooms, I might want my light version. And then because the dark version is along my corridor because my character is currently stood in that volume. You can see the effect at the bottom here. If I grab my FPS controller, move the FPS controller in here, you can see that it's, it's lighter than the actual corridor itself. You can test this for yourself. And when you walk in, you can see the difference when we get the fade in between the two effects and you can add up as many volumes for post processing as you want. You just need to make sure that you create different post processing profiles 
and add those to the actual profile slot in the volume. And do let me know if you're looking at the tutorial to create the atmospheric environment and may make it into a series. I don't know, I'll maybe do a poll to get an opinion. Thanks very much for checking out this tutorial. Do check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel and get access to over 135 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do come and chat to me on Discord and check out my great assets on the Unity Assets Store and all the bonus discounts on my website with codes off if you become a patron and or check the description. So thank you to all my patrons and a big thanks to Peter Steiner for supporting the channel along with all the amazing subscribers and everybody who comes to watch. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.